Good morning. Let's start this morning with prayer. Father, we dedicate this September 27th, Wednesday to you, Lord God. Be glorified and speak to us through lamentation of chapter 3, verse 34 through 39. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm committed to teach 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Six verses today. Uh, without further ado, let's get at it. To crush underfoot all prisoners in the land. To deny people their rights before the Most High. To deprive them of justice. Would not the Lord see such things? Hmm. In King James, to crush under his feet all the prisoners of the earth. To turn aside the right of a man before the face of Most High. To subvert a man in his cause, the Lord approveth not God's justice. Mm. American standard. To crush under one's feet all the prisoners of the land, to deprive a man of justice in the presence of the Most High, to defraud someone in his lawsuit of these things, Lord does not approve. Wow. So three verses, bam, bam, bam. This triple of verses form basically one sentence at the end. Lord approveth not, or doth not look on. He will turn his face against you. Wow. <laughs> this is amazing, powerful stuff, because all the stuff that you're doing unto others, you're doing unto the poor people, depriving of their justice. You know that they deserve that, you know, robbing of the land, and especially in Cambodia. I mean, man, these political leaders, generals, and powerful figures, when they become general, they go back to their own home country and area, and they just grab all the land. And basically, you need to... You're a rightful owner, you have all the paperwork, but you still have to sue the general in order to get the land back, which is not possible. When crap like that happens, the Lord will turn his face. And that is part of the punishment. Lord's presence leaving you becomes part of the punishment. Wow, we don't really think it that way though, right? It's like, oh, I'm fine. You know, God's presence don't have to be, I, well, I don't need, I don't feel him anyways to start with. So yeah. I don't have to feel his presence, yeah. That would be really sad. Who is there who speaks and it comes to pass unless the Lord has authorized and commanded it? See, Jeremiah already spoke in Jeremiah 20 through 32. He says, Indeed, declares the Lord, I am against those who prophesy false dreams and retell them to lead my people astray with their reckless lies. It was not I who sent them or command them and are not no benefit at all to these people, declares the Lord. Right? Only God speaks. And when God speaks, the recipient could act on it and make it make the word of God actualized in life. But there are people that conjure up God's words and declares that it is the Lord and benefit from that. That's what Jeremiah is against. Calvin writes, God is the judge of the world. We hence see that it was monstrous thing when men entertain the nation that God is idle or forgetful that he gives up the world to chance, right? Um, hmm. So is it not from the mouth of the Most High that good and bad comes? That's English standard, the Berean standard. Do not both adversity and good come from the mouth of the Most High? The King James, out of the mouth of Most High proceed not evil and good. It's a little different, huh? I, I, I In this particular, I like King James. It's, very straightforward. Out of the mouth of the Most High proceed not evil and good, both pleasant and both terrible 
evil and good. Yeah, God speaks both evil and good. Right? Barnes, Barnes notes on the Bible, why then does loving God who disapprove of suffering when inflicted by man upon man himself send sorrow and misery? Because of sins. Yeah, we're going back to that point of like, yes, we deserve what is coming to us, right? We deserve what's coming to us. Finally, why does a son of man and a man who lives think much upon his sin? Hmm. It's really interesting translation. Okay, so I'll give you a chance to kind of respond. What do you think that word is in common English? Aramaic Bible in plain English. So they're translating the Aramaic. Why does a son of man and man who lives think much upon his sins? Think much upon his sins. What do you think that is? Well, King James and Septuagint both translate this as complain. Complain. Let me read that in King James. Wherefore doth a living man complain a man for the punishment of his sins? Septuagint. Why should a living man complain a man concerning his sin? Why are you murmuring? Why are you complaining? Why are you thinking too much about it, right? Thinking too much about it could actually be in the form of complaint. Like, well, what is there to think much about it? You sinned, you got punished, and it is painful. Get on with it. You know, life goes on. It's like, why was I? Wow, why? There's so much pain. Oh, God. Right? Thinking much. Right? Actionless thinking. It's a little different, different thing, but still, I'm, I'm, I'm like, the problem with rationalists is that they just think that thinking is knowing. They think thinking is doing, right? They become expert in feeding the poor, but they haven't really fed anybody. They just became expert at feeding the poor. <laughs> they became expert at mission. They're, they teach on mission, but they haven't done any missional work. They don't even have mission field. They just, they're a professor of missiology and they've never been to mission field. It's like, yeah, he's teaching how people should play golf, but he never went to golf field, you know. Ridiculous. Thinking too much. Jeremiah writes, this is, I love this. Why do you cry out over your womb? Your pain has no cure because of your great iniquity and your numerous sins. I have done these things to you. God is saying that, well, I whacked you because your sin, you were terrible. You've done all these things to my people, you know, a poor people you took advantage of and, and you did not give justice to the people. You, you, you judges, you, you were against your people. I mean, he said, and then so you get whacked. And all the time, it's like, oh, it's so painful. Oh, this is so unfair. Why am I, well, you know, it's like on and on. Please stop. Micah 7, 9, because I have sinned against him, I must endure the rage of the Lord until he argues my case and exec executes justice for me. He will bring me into the light. I will see his righteousness. Wow. What a difference, right? The Micah prophesied that there are there are people who's gonna the revelation will come and they'll become wise up and said, Well, I'm punished, and that settles it. Thank you, and repent, and you are going to be brought back to the light. Calvin writes, Why does a living man wear himself? Go astray through their own perverse imagination. That's what thinking too much is. It's a perverse imagination. Province for humans up there, even because they look on to themselves and, and on and on and on. Wow. You know, Calvin nails it like, bam. <laughs> you live in your own world of perverse imagination. Without doing anything, talking about it, imagining. Imagining help those poor people. Imagining help those people who are in need. Imagining that, oh yeah, someday when I become a billionaire, I will give my million to some people. 
or that kind of nonsense, right? Oh, stop, Lord. We don't want to live nonsensically today. We want to live in reality. We'd like to see your kingdom come, Lord God, on earth as it is in heaven and do something about it. Today, I want to make a difference, Lord, in my action on earth for eternity in heaven, Lord. Yes, Lord God, I'm so weak. I'm so self-focused, self-centered, narcissistic. It's all about me, Lord. So, Father, I die to myself. I'll do something, Father, that will glorify you, edify the body of Christ, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Wow, so convicting. I think I know what I have to do. In Jesus' name, amen. You, do, you go and do the same. 